Oh, hi. Uh, okay, so today I am going to, or this week probably, I'm going to try to build my own power supply. I'm tired of using batteries. I want a variable power supply with a uh, voltmeter in there and everything. So what I plan on doing is I have these right here. These are uh, power supplies from an old printer. You can see there what the uh, thing is. got a 12 volt. I'm sorry, 24 volt positive at 10 amps, and it's got a 5 volt out, a negative 12, and a positive 12. Um, I can use the negative 12 and positive 12 just for circuitry purposes, the 5 volt for circuitry purposes, but the 24 volts what I'm going to be using out of this. Um, I've got four of these. They're sitting here, and uh, two identical, and the other two identical, but they're all pretty much the same. A um, little different model, I guess, but. Uh, what I'm going to be doing with those is hooking them up so they're 24 volt. I can get up to what 96 volts out um, if I parallel them all together. So yeah, basically that's what I'm going to be uh, be doing. But I've got some other ideas here I want to share with you and uh, you know see what you think. Let me know. <clears throat> you got better ideas than me? That that's fine. Uh, Reagan, that's actually where your step motors came from. Where those printers salvaged. Yay. I don't know where the other one went, but uh, here's what my uh, my pulse with. Well, let me start over. Here's what I got uh, for my varying the voltage. I've got these right here. And what this is is a a driver card from uh, a fork truck. And this drives the motor that uh, turns the truck. Uh, they're like 200 or something like that amps. Um, might be a little less than that, but plenty for what I want to do. Now what I have to do is this plug here, I have to give this the right signals. It needs a ground, a digital ground, and a, uh, a pulse width modulated signal. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is building my own pulse width modulator, which I've already done. A while back, I actually built an electric skateboard. And uh, this is the driver I built for it. It basically does what this does. There's three MOSFETs on here. I can hook up 24 volts to the circuitry and 12 volts to the the, actual, the circuitry and 24 volts to the, uh, the motor. And uh, I had this potentiometer right on this long cord here and I would hold it in my hand and just turn it. Turn it with my hand like this and I would, I would uh, either go faster or slower on my skateboard. It would cruise over 20 miles an hour and uh, when I went to college I could go past the traffic on the streets because there was a really slow speed limit for those. It was really fun. But uh, unfortunately I don't have any footage of that. Uh, I'm really actually disappointed in myself but you can just imagine in your head me in this crazy hat like flying down the highway right and on a skateboard. But anyway so I got my probe hooked up here and my uh, my oscilloscope and this is what the signal looks like. I'll turn this I'll turn this potentiometer you can see it in the reflection and uh, you'll see the output signal so you can see that the more I turn it the faster it is. That's my pulse width uh, modulator that I actually built from scratch. It took a while and uh, it actually puts out a pretty good wave form. Uh, I'm actually reading right after the um, the MOSFET driver. There's a MOSFET driver chip on here. If I read before that, the square wave isn't as nice, so I might have to work on that. But basically, I have to send this signal from this type of board to this plug, which is hooked up to this power supply, and then I can run that uh, through an amp meter and a digital amp meter and uh, a voltmeter on there. Now, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to externally power these together or do it by switch and relay. Uh, I have to think about that. What I'd like to do on my output side is put some capacitors like this. I've only got three of these. I need to find another one, so I'm kind of out of luck. I really need four, so I might do something different. But I was going to use this. This is actually like a 60, 60 amp DC power supply. I'm not 60 amp, but 60 volts. Uh, it's a lot of amperage, actually. I don't even remember what it was. Come out of something. Imagine that. Uh, a while back I showed you these power supplies and I was going to use these but they're really not designed for what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm better off just using using these and I can hook up these in series uh, and they won't blow up which I was afraid that maybe all if I tied all the grounds you know hot to ground hot to ground 
that it would actually internally have a problem. Hooked it up and it works. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But that's the deal. And uh, I need everybody's opinion. And this is going to be a little video series of building your own power supply. Because uh, I don't have, like normal, any money to buy a power supply. So that's fine. No problem. Here's the diagram um, for the pulse width modulator. I haven't actually built this. I, I took this off of what I already have because I don't have the original. This was such a long time ago, I don't have the original documentation. This is all I could find. Um, this is actually what this board is. Let me pull this off here and show you what this is. This is an old amplifier, by the way. You can see I just hacked it off, used it as a heat sink. Um, works pretty well. But what you can see here is this is sitting, let's see, just like this on this board caught on my cam. Okay, and you can see that I actually etched this circuit board because right there is my name, RWG. See that? I actually etched this board. At the time, I didn't have the right tool, so I took fingernail polish, marked it, and then uh, stuck it in that acid, etched it out. Uh, pretty cool stuff. I've done this before, but that was the first time I've ever done it. So there it is. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Okay, so this is uh, video number one of uh, building your own power supply unit. And it, depending on how I do this, I can get anywhere from uh, up to 24 volts at 40 amps or I can go anywhere in between that but I have to lower my amperage so I can go up to 96 volts and it'll only be at 10 amps um, and I'd like to put capacitors on the output so if I short something out it doesn't blow up my power supply it just blows my wires to smithereens and uh, obviously I'm gonna have fuses in there but at the same time if a spike gets back to my power supply it's not gonna be a good thing uh, but that's what these are uh, these are pretty pretty good sized power supplies. I'm just going to tuck them all in a box. Uh, I'm going to go to Harbor Freight, I think, unless somebody can give me a better idea. But if I go to Harbor Freight, you can buy digital multimeters for $3. Um, and it'll do resistance and all this stuff. But what I'm going to do is take it apart and mount it in my panel. Because I can't find a panel view um, meter for less than $3. So I'm just going to buy the whole thing. And I can actually use that up to 10 amps as well. Um, you know, it is Harbor Freight, it's not the best stuff you can buy, but this is just a reference voltage. When you're going to get down to the nitty gritty, okay, you have to get out the oscilloscope and read what's going on and, you know, get a defined voltage, but for what I'm doing, I think it'll be fine. So there you go. Um, again, what this is, because I kind of explained it quick, this is actually what they call a steer amp in a fork truck. Uh, I got a bunch of these because they were having issues, but they still function. Uh, the The fork truck was faulting, but I think there was some other issue, and I the fault that they are reading, I don't I don't need. Uh, these also have a an analog voltage output for the uh, for the amperage. So if I can calculate the amperage and the analog output, I could actually use a digital voltmeter, um, like I'll be doing, and I'll be actually using that as the amperage. Uh, that's just built into this unit. That way you don't overdo the unit. The truck can say, whoa, slow down. I'm overdoing it. So uh, that's it. I'm going to let you guys go. Try to keep this short and sweet. Um, so that's the plan. Power supply. Okay, and I'm going to run it probably through the steer ramp. And I'm going to use a potentiometer to run a pulse width modulator to the steer ramp, which will output a proper signal to a capacitor bank and then obviously I have voltmeter and amp meter and then out my power supply box that's all there is to it um, if you guys got any better suggestions let me know I would like to put a fixed 5 volt and a fixed 12 volt um, power supply in there I can just get a little power adapter and tile the grounds together no problem um, negative voltage what I can do is just jumper if I if I put all my outputs separate then I can jumper between one and the other and I can have the other one half would be negative, one half would be positive. That way everything's isolated. So I gotta figure out a way to tie everything together but yet separate. I think I'll do that with relays and push buttons on the front. So if I hit a switch, all of them will be tied together in series. Hit another switch, 
you know, half of them be tied together and I have 24 volt and 24 volt or, uh, you know, 48 volt, 48 volt, whatever. So, uh, I'll be quiet now. And, uh, lots going on around here in my shop. It's crazy. I got a lot of housework I've been doing. And, uh, cheers. Jack, I got my hat on. Give me some sunshine. Keep it real, people. See ya. Trust. Hey guys, one more thing I want to add. Um, this pole switch with modulated circuit, I'll draw this up better for you guys. Uh, but what I want to know is if anybody has a really, really stable square wave or pulse width modulated um, circuit that's easy, runs on like a 555 timer. Uh, a lot of the ones I see, you know, they don't have the perfect square wave. Does anybody have any really good, really good square wave creating circuits um, with simple chips like a few chips and a few other things there isn't too much to this diagram but right there will get me through it however many components that is so uh, anyway that's it see you